It's, it would be the first time since 2006. Uh, Todd, you're not expecting the Fed to raise. You don't think they should. Oh, well. I don't think they will. I don't think they have enough spine to do that. I really think that they're but really think, weak. I, see. So I believe they, they should, should, but they won't. They should have raised a long time ago. The only way we're going to get out of the problems that we have right now is to raise rates because raising rates will actually create growth because what we've really done with their policy is eliminate the entrepreneur. We've eliminated the ability for somebody to go out and borrow money because the mirage you see of rates, everybody says mortgages, mortgages. Why aren't we selling more homes? Because the people that want to buy them can't get a mortgage because the banks won't free up liquidity. The banks are too happy putting their money back with the full faith and credit of the United States government mm. because if I could borrow at zero and give it back to two and three quarters or two and a half to the government and get guaranteed or give it to me for three and three quarters, who am I going to give it How to? How does that lending get any easier with higher rates? Because what happens is the spread that banks want to make on their dollars, okay, the, more, the higher the base rate gets, the bigger the spread gets in between that then frees up tier one capital that they want to lend out because they're making more money. On a one point spread from what they can get and what they're gonna put, put out, it's not big enough. But they get three to four points, they love the loan money, which is why you see a lot of credit card debt, because they love the credit cards, because you're paying usury rates on a lot of them. Right. Joe, what do you think? Well, look, Carl Icahn, billionaire investor, I spoke, spoke to him yesterday, right? That's right, yesterday. And he is also in your camp. He says rates must go up. He said that, you know, this big asset bubble has been built, and the rates just need to go. But he also said, look, if they don't raise today, then they'll just do it again in a couple of months or in December. So, but then so you have another camp, right? Lloyd Blankfein of uh, Goldman Sachs telling the Wall Street Journal he wouldn't go. Right. Because oh. the economy is too weak. Because he exactly. wants $20 oil. Uh, he thinks that the oil is going to 20 I but, mean, he, right. They uh, said $20 oil mm -hmm. at home, and that's absolutely right. But, but, I mean, how big of a deal is a quarter point uh, uh, rise, right? I mean, if it's 25 basis points, is that really going to move the needle in terms of putting a crimp into an economy that's just gaining traction, you think? It seems, from the analysts I've talked to, especially those who are looking at tech and looking at housing and stuff like that, it seems like this would just, it's all psychological at this right. point. Because right. if it's, it's about bracing for what is definitely going to happen or what might happen. Right. And that's really, the psychology of the Fed right now is really hard to tell because the numbers, a lot of the data has been relatively weak. I guess, you know, I don't know how you feel like the markets will react, but let's say the Fed doesn't raise today. Do the markets view that as, wow, the economy is a lot worse off than I thought, and we, we get a big sell-off? I think eventually they turn that over, but I think what you saw the last couple of days, and if you've been watching the last couple of days, we have some real interesting market action. The markets have been railing very large. We've had the biggest two-day gain in six weeks or Hi. two months. The bond market has been getting, the bond futures have been getting crushed, pushing up yields higher in the bond market. So the equity market is saying the Fed is going to do nothing. The bond market is saying they're going to raise, and at one point, there's going to be, there's going to be a winner today. The bell is going to go off, and there's going to be a winner. The big scheme, a quarter point means nothing. It's thirty-five dollars a month on on a mortgage. Right, I mean, right, right. I, I mean, it's, You're the it, second it, person to say that here. Yeah, somebody said it. Yeah. It's it's yes, it means yes, nothing. Yes. It's it's a, a a total waste, and we the, the, that we spend so much time and emotion trying to deal with the Fed. The Fed is lost. Okay, all the central banks. I think they're almost like in cahoots with each other. They take turns, you know, bringing down their currency. They got to work around the world. But at the end of the day, they're all kind of lost and not doing what needs to be done to really improve everybody's economy. We like to manipulate. They're day trading the stock market. Are you kidding me? We're going to continue? Janet Yellen's going to look at the tape well, today. Well, the market's down. We better uh, not raise. I don't know about that, Todd. Come on. They are day trading the market. Did, did Ben Bernanke not come out in May of 2013 thing. and say, we're going to raise rates, and two days later, we had the taper tantrum, and all of a sudden, you had every Fed governor in the, in the, coming out saying, oh, no, we're not going to raise rates. Yeah. But the elephant in the room, as we've discussed all week, Maria, is the situation in China and the global economic situation with all of our trade partners that you've reported on. What will happen? What is the psychology of the Fed as it looks outward to the yeah, global economy? Absolutely. All right. We'll be uh, talking about that all day. I will be anchoring a special report, full coverage and analysis of the Federal Reserve decision. Uh, the, uh, the, everybody's with me today. Lou Jobs, Neil Cavuto, Stuart Varney. We are all anchoring special coverage today. It all starts at 1 p.m. Eastern right here on the Fox.